Joel Salatin told me on the first day at the forum, he said, Ty, I only have one rule. You're not allowed to make a mistake. And I was only 19 and I actually believed him. It was crazy. That's why my most of my wealthiest students started with me at like 16. They just believed me. I was like, start an SMMA. You can make a lot of money. They're like, okay. And they made a million dollars before they were 19. And then all the adults that are like, mm, let me double check on Ty and my intuition. Yeah, they don't make any money. So I was 19. Joel Salatin goes, yo, Ty, I got one rule. I don't know if he was joking in hindsight, but he didn't seem like he was joking. He said, never make a mistake here. I'm like, what? He's like, I got a million dollars worth of animals. Don't make mistakes. No mistakes. And so I got a, yeah, I got these little pads of paper. This is before iPhones. I got little pads of paper. I went to the grocery store. I remember in this little farm town and I bought a pack of 12 notepads and I would put them in my back pocket. And anytime Joel said anything, I wrote that down word for word. And then I would study it at night. Okay. He said, feed the chickens two scoops of feed. Then in the morning I wake up, I pull out my notepad, two scoops of feed. I can't make mistakes. I'm not allowed to make mistakes. It's the one rule. Okay. I won't make a mistake. And I never made mistakes. Rarely not on things like that. And Joel Southson's wife used to wash my clothes for me. And she said, Ty, every single pair of pants you have, the back pocket is ripped. And she said, why is that? And I realized it was because I would take that little three ring binder mini notepad and put it in my back pocket. And I walked around and every time I sat down, it would rub it and rip it. I was in, I was obsessed with conscientiousness, discipline, organized thinking, remembering things. I was obsessed with perfection. You know, I just found my journals from when I was 19 years old on the form. I found I manifest that it was crazy. I started journaling on my phone and like last week I said, Man, I wish I had my journals from a teenager. I want to see what I was thinking compared to now. Three in three days, we found them at my stepdad's house. He sadly died and they were going through his stuff. I don't even I manifested those journals in three days. I was reading it. I'm going to screenshot, I'm going to take a picture of this with all my sloppy handwriting. And it said, I think I'm somehow related to my grandfather scientist. I want to quantify everything. I want to write everything down. I want to get organized. I, I was conscientious. I don't know. It's a genetic trait, but you can also cultivate it. And the number one thing we're running up against, I'm telling you, is conscientiousness is almost dead in this world. It's almost dead. It's almost dead. So you guys got to come in knowing you're like a one on conscientiousness. I don't know why. I, 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 I'm I not sure. I don't know. There's not. I don't see a lot of people that I've hired in the last 10 years that I would consider high on conscientiousness. Don't bring me preliminary reports. Bring me crazy level of scrutiny already so that I'm thumbing up. I don't. The good rule of thumb is if you show me a proposal and I shoot it down in 10 seconds, that means you're not conscientious because you've been, it should take me about 30 minutes to think through something and find something you didn't think through. This is the way of the black belt. You want to make money, you got to become a black belt. I was reading an interesting quote a guy said, said to make money can't be taught, but it can be learned. I was like, ah, that's pretty profound. It can't be taught, but it can be learned. You know what that means? I could sit on here and lecture you all all day long and just going in one ear out the other. But some of you are ready to learn and you'll mimic, you'll mimic, and then you'll get it. But it can't be taught. You can't go to somebody and lecture them, hey, you should become more conscientious. Here's how to make money. It can't be taught, but it can be learned. What that means is it's not on me. I can't teach you, but you on you can learn it. You could learn it in a blink of an eye too. Blink of an eye. That's the thing that the tragedy is like, I look around and I'm like, all this stuff could be learned. It's the acceptance. You got to accept that the way you think about things is completely wrong. And you've been lied to by society. Having been taught to be an organized, perfectionist, diligent, or prudent. Prudence, the hardest one. Prudent is when should you do cardio versus strength at the gym. That's a prudence thing. Wise. I, I knew a guy, I was in Toronto and I saw this dude working out with a trainer. He's the skinniest guy I've ever seen. Like almost anorect, like unhealthy skinny. And the dude had a very skinny trainer and they were doing cardio for one hour. And I wanted to walk over to the guy and I go, bro, do you have a mirror? Do you think you're weak link? 
is fat loss. I said, you're like 1% body fat, but I'm not sure you can bench press one bar by yourself. I said, you don't think you should do a little strength training? <laughs> and then I got another friend that's fat, but strong. I'm like, bro, you don't think you should do a little cardio? You never heard of prudence. You never heard of wisdom. You never heard about picking the right thing. So that's part, that fourth one's the trickiest one. That's the hardest for me. That's hard. A lot of the other stuff's not. The only hard part of conscientious for me, for the most part, is prudence. That's the one you never perfect fully. But organization perfectionism, I'm a red belt. I can look at your guys' stuff and find errors in one millisecond. Okay? So I'm a red belt in that. That one's easy to learn. It just you got to have organization is partly if you're lazy. Sometimes when I'm lazy, I don't get organized. That one's a bit harder. Um, you know, diligence, which is don't give up so easy. Like sometimes you all are asking me stuff. I'm like, did you ask chat DBT this? Well, no, I didn't. Well, you're not diligent. Then diligent means going the extra step. That takes a little bit of work. You know, I was talking to somebody. I was like, did you Google it? That's diligence. Or my friend was asked, I was telling him, let's meet at this one jujitsu place. And he's like, can you send me the address? I'm like, no, you can Google it just as quick as me. Be diligent. Diligent takes energy. A lot of people are just lazy or, or they give up too quick, you know? So that, that, that one's the easiest for me is diligence is the easiest. Perfectionism's pretty easy. Organization is a bit harder. Prudence is a lifelong journey. I still make unwise decisions. Um, but not on little stuff, you know, I, I, I don't just do cardio and I don't just do weights. Like I, I, and in business, I understand it's a prudent decision in general, not to pay salespeople base pay. Maybe some, maybe, but in general, base pay makes people poor. It just does. Nobody who's wealthy or even financially independent from base pay. It's never happened, never will. But a lot of people get rich from commissions. That's what changed my life was getting all base pay into commissions and sales. I'm here for you all on something that a, a group of smart people can't think through. A group of brown belts can't figure it out. Okay, you've all tried hard. You, you use diligence. Have you used chat GPT? I'm doing everything with chat GPT. You know, let me ask chat GPT. Should pros and cons of paying sales people base pay plus commissions versus just commissions. So I'm going to ask you for pros and cons, and then I'm going to say, if you had to decide on one, what would you do? That would actually make the salesperson and the company the most money, a win-win situation. So let me write this out. If you could only, only pick one, that has the best chance, long term, not short term, of win win, which. So let's see. Let's see what it says. To me, by the way, that is part of being diligent. Like you can query Chat GPT three times without giving up. Damn it. Some of y'all do Chat GPT one time and you're done. I'm like, how is that diligent? Three times. Three times. ChatGPT's first answer is always horrific. Horrific. It's all the second and third one. It gets smart. It's all politically correct for the first one. So I'm now waiting for it and I'm doing the second one. Let's see. Let's see what it says. I'm on number two. That's going to still give me politically correct. Well, if you want this, I'll go on. Pick, I just insist. Pick one, damn it. That's what I'm going to say to it. 